I think, you know, particularly for uh, Americans, you know, like think about America is a nation of explorers. Uh, people came here from other parts of the world that, you know, uh, chose to give up the known in favor of the unknown. Um, so I think uh, exploration, like <clears throat> I think the United States is a, is a distillation of the human spirit of exploration. Um, and uh, so that's why it, it appeals to Americans so much. You know, um, you can see this when, say there was a shuttle tragedy um, and seven people died. And that's, that's terrible, but you know, a lot of people die all the time. Um, but, but why do we care so much? Because it was the dream of exploration that was dying uh, along with those people. That's why. Well, I think things are going to be, they're going to grow exponentially. So there's a big difference between five and ten years. Um, you know, my, my guess is, uh, yeah, probably in ten years, more than a half of uh, new vehicle um, production is electric in the United States. Um, and China's probably going to be ahead of that because China's been super pro EV. Um, I don't think a lot of people know this, but like, I mean, China's environmental policies are way ahead of the US. Like their mandate for renewable energy far exceeds the US. I think this, sometimes people are under the impression that China is uh, either dragging their feet or, or somehow behind the U.S. in terms of um, sustainable energy promotion, but they're, they're by far the most aggressive on Earth. It's crazy. I mean, like, in fact, the uh, coalition of Chinese car manufacturers just wrote the Chinese government to beg for them to slow down the mandate because hmm. it's like too much. They, they need to make 8% electric vehicles, I think, like next year or in two years or something. This is like, they can't physically do it. Um, so China's the, by far the most aggressive on um, electric vehicles and solar. Um, so, um, but that's a common misperception that they're not. Um, there's one Google search way to figure this out, by the way, it's really pretty straight, pretty easy. So, and in, ten, in ten, yeah, 10 years, man, I think, yeah, yeah. So ha half of all production, I think, will be, be EV. I think almost all cars produced will be autonomous in 10 years. Almost all. It will be rare to find one that is not in 10 years. Um, that's going to be a huge transformation. Um, now, the thing to bear in mind, though, is that new vehicle production is only about 5% the size of the vehicle fleet. So you think about how long does a car or truck last? And they last 15 to 20 years. So before they're finally scrapped. So new vehicle production is only roughly one, at, at most one fifteenth of the, the fleet size. So even when new vehicle production, say, switches, those, switches over to electric or to autonomous, that still means the vast majority of the fleet on the roads is not. It'll take another you know, five to 10 years before that becomes the majority, the majority of the fleet becomes EV or uh, uh, autonomous. Um, but if you were to say go out 20 years, overwhelmingly things are electric autonomous, overwhelmingly. There will not be a steering wheel. <laughs> In 20 years, um, it will be like having a horse. People have horses, which is cool. Um, yeah, yeah. And there will be people that have, that have you know, non-autonomous cars, like people have horses. <laughs> it just would be unusual to use that as a mode of transport. But, I mean, first of all, it's a, <clears throat> important to appreciate that the Earth is almost entirely solar-powered today, um, in the sense that the sun is the only thing that keeps us from um, being at roughly the temperature of cosmic background radiation, which is three degrees above absolute zero. If it wasn't for a sun, we'd be a frozen dark uh, ice bowl, um, and the uh, the amount of so the amount of energy that hits the sun that reaches us from the sun is tremendous. It's it's over, it's the it's 99 percent plus of all energy that, that Earth has. Um, then there's, there's 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 this energy we need to use to run civilization, which to us is big, but compared to the amount of energy that reaches us from the sun is tiny. Um, 
So it, it, it's very easy, for, like it actually doesn't take much. If, if, you, if you wanted to power the entire United States with solar panels, um, it would take um, a, put, a fairly small corner of Nevada, Texas, Utah, anywhere. Uh, look, you, it's, it, you only need about 100 miles by 100 miles of solar panels to power the entire United States. Um, and then the, the batteries you need to store that energy to make sure you have 24-7 um, uh, power is one mile by one mile. So one, one square mile. <laughs> that's, that's, it. That's, that's it. Um, I, I showed the graph of the, or, or image of this where uh, this is what 100 miles by 100 miles looks like. It's like you know, a little square on the US map. Um, and then one, there's a little pixel inside there, and that's the size of the battery pack that you need to support that. It, it, use of energy can, is roughly divided into three areas. Um, and they're more or less equal um, at, a, at a high level. Um, there's about a third of energy is used for transportation of various kinds. About a third is used uh, for electricity. About a third is used for heating. So if you want to have uh, and, and then of, of, of the electricity production, call it, you know, something on the order of 10%, depending upon how you count it, is renewable. Maybe 15% um, uh, today. So th that means that there's a massive amount of solar that would need, pe need to be produced um, and connected in order to, to be fully sustainable. Because fully sustainable means you're tackling transport, um, non-renewable electricity generation and heating. Um, so that, that means that we'll need to be a combination of utility scale solar and rooftop scale solar combined with uh, wind, geothermal, uh, hydro, probably some, some nuclear for a while um, in order to transition to a sustainable uh, situation. Um, which means really for the most part massive, massive growth in solar. Um, and it's, it's going to be important to have rooftop solar in uh, neighborhoods um, because otherwise you're going to, there'll need to be uh, massive new transmission lines built. And people do not like having transmission lines go through the neighborhood. They really don't like that. And I agree. <laughs> so um, so you, you want to have some localized energy uh, production um, combined with utility. It's, so you want, Rooftop solar, utility solar, um, and uh, that, that's, that's really going to be the solution from a physics standpoint, but I can't see any other way to really do it. Um, um, people talk a lot about fusion and all that, but the, the sun is a giant fusion reactor in the sky, and it's really reliable. It comes up every day. Um, <laughs> so if it doesn't, we've got bigger problems. <laughs> so I, I think on the artificial intelligence front, um, you know, I, I have exposure to the, ver the very c most cutting edge um, AI, um, uh, and I think people should be really concerned about it. Um, I keep so sounding the alarm bell, but you know, until people see like robots going down the street killing people, like they don't know how to react, you know, because it seems so ethereal. Um, and um, I think we should be really concerned about AI, and I think we should. This is, AI is a rare case where I think we need to be proactive in regulation instead of reactive. Um, because I think by the time we are reactive in AI regulation, it's too late. Um, and no, normally the way regulations are set up is that a whole bunch of bad things happen, there's a public outcry, the, the, and then after many years, a regulatory agency is set up to regulate that industry. Um, and there's a bunch of opposition from companies who don't like being told what to do by regulators. Um, anyway, it takes forever. Um, that, that in the past ha has been bad, but not um, something which represented a, uh, you know, a fundamental risk to the existence of civilization. AI is a fundamental risk to the existence of human civilization. Um, in a way that car accidents, uh, airplane crashes, um, faulty drugs, 
or bad food were, were not. They were, not they, they were harmful to, to uh, a set of individuals within society, of course, but they were not harmful to society as a whole. Um, AI is a fundamental existential risk for human society.